And I'd like to say to my preacher, brethren, I really mean this. I believe that we ought not to be too hasty to get them to join the church if they haven't repented. I believe it don't hurt them. It don't hurt them for to prove their faith for a while. It don't hurt for them to uh, prove that they're saved and, and been won to Christ and saved by the grace of God and their life has changed. And so he said, bring forth some fruit, meat, for repentance. What are the fruits? I believe our names, son. Number one would be a new heart and a new start, and you'll become new. The Bible said old things pass away, behold, all things will become new. Now, some of the fruits of that experience, one of them ought to be restitution. You say, what do you mean restitution? I believe that we ought to make right what we can make right. Now, I've learned to love these preachers right good. Brother George Phillips picked me up this morning and carried me in. He's got a great testimony. You know, I, I just, uh, I'd like for these preachers to visit the City of Refuge a little more often, when, especially when you're gone, Brother Johnny. And they ought to volunteer to go over and stand in for you while you're building for us. But, you know, uh, Brother George and I was riding around the town this morning a little bit, having a little fellowship, had a prayer meeting together. And uh, uh, suppose that last night while I slept, Brother George uh, eased in my hotel room and got my billfold. And I just suppose he did. And uh, this morning he met me, and I said, you know, I'm a little disturbed. I, I, uh, I lost my billfold last night, and my life's earnings was in it. And uh, my cards, my credit cards, you know, and, and my identification card. And uh, I said, I, I really miss you. I mean, I need it. I sure regret. Somebody got in my room last night and stole my billfold. And so we traveled around, and I noticed he looked a little funny. But... Uh, we kept on going. We went to the motel, hotel room and we prayed together. And he said, Brother Olong, I've got something I want to tell you. And I said, Yeah, go ahead, Brother George. He said, I, I got your billfold last night. About, I guess it's 2 o'clock in the morning. When I came in, I said, Really? Yes, he said, and I thought I'd better ask you to forgive me. Just want you to forgive me, Brother Olong. Will you, will you do that? And I stand and look at him a little bit. And... I said, you really want me to forgive you? Oh, yeah. He said, I, I'd be very glad if you would. I, I just felt like it'd make me feel better, you know, if you'd forgive me. And I keep standing there looking. And directly, I'm just going to get bold enough to say, Brother George, where's my billfold? Huh? Now, let's get the record straight. He did not steal my billfold. But I don't believe he really repented of it unless he bring my billfold back. I don't believe you've repented until you get right and say, Lord, uh, I want to live different from now on. And by the grace of God, you will live different. Fact is, I'm going to say something. I believe that uh, you, if you really get saved, I don't believe you ought to ever have to smoke another cigarette. I don't believe you ought to have to taper off in your liquor drinking. I don't believe you ought to cut out on your stakes and your gambling, but cut out your gambling. When you get saved, if you're saved from sin, you ought to stay out of it. I'm not saying that you'll be perfect the rest of your life, but I'll say this. You'll hate sin the rest of your life. Oh, dear friend... If you can live in sin as the habit of your life, you've never been saved. Your attitude, your heart, your mind, restitution. I mean, we ought to make right what we can. I believe that when a man really gets saved and repents, he ought to make a public profession of his faith in Christ. The Bible said if we confess him before men, that's more than one. I believe we ought to just go right. I don't believe in these little secret decisions. Pass out decision cards back there and said, sign one, leave it, and we'll find out about your conversion. Brother, get up and walk. I'll tell you something else. We've had too much now. Y'all just slip down the aisle. You ever heard that? Just slip right down. Slip nothing, brother. Come on, walking and a stalking and a talking and a weeping and a crying and a repenting and a... I mean, just come on! Slip nothing. It's all right for the devil's crowd to slip around. We're not slipping anywhere. You're not going to slip into heaven, brother. We're going to go there by grace through faith. I believe that's the way they used to do it when people got saved. We might as well do it that way now. And if you think I'm trying to get a report, 
with a bunch of decisions and a bunch of cards to haul off or share or do anything else with. In the first place, I don't have anybody on earth that wants my report now. And I don't care about a report. I want to see people saved. I want to see the church revived. I want to see the cause of Christ to, to flourish in this city. But dear friends, you and I, as surely as we live, it's God that must bring about Bible repentance. Have you ever repented? Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I'd like to give an illustration and close the message. Now, repentance is a godly sorrow for sin. Repentance is a forsaking of sin. Real repentance is a putting your trust in Jesus Christ so that you'll not live like that anymore. That's repentance. Repentance is permanent. It's a lifelong and eternity-long experience. You'll never love the devil again once you repent. You'll never hold hands with him. You'll hit him a few times and every time you can, but you'll never flirt with the devil as the habit of your life again once you get saved. You'll never be happy living in sin. It'll never satisfy. And the husks of the world will never fill your longing and hungering in your soul. Repentance is something a lot bigger than a lot of people think. It's absolutely essential if you go to heaven. Many years ago, I guess, I don't know, back in school sometime, I read the story that they call the search of the Paris. The Paris were supposed to be the fallen angels that rebelled against God, and God excluded them and gave them a dishonorable discharge from heaven and said, you'll never return again. And we're told in this little story that was written that they got together after they'd gotten fed up on everything the world had to offer. They'd drunk from every bottle. They'd sipped the nectar of everything Satan had to offer to them, and they were miserable and unhappy. They got together one day and said, you know, there's nothing down here compared with what we had up yonder. Oh, we're homesick. We're homesick. And so they said, well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's go knock on the gate and see if Gabriel will let us in. And so they said, well, we couldn't go without offering something. We better take something with us. And one of them said, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's visit the battlefield. They visited the battlefield yonder in Africa, and they found a great big old strong colored warrior that had just given his life for his emperor. Blood had run down his flesh, and they said, say, isn't that loyalty for you? And Lee, he knew he'd die on the battlefield. And they said, let's get some of his unselfish blood and knock on the gate and offer it to Gabriel and say, look what we found. And Gabriel said, no. But he said, in order to get in, you'll have to offer the thing that's the most precious from earth to heaven, or I'll never let you in. And they said, we thought maybe this might be. Oh, they said, no, you go and come again. They came back to the earth, and they visited another battlefield in Italy, and they found a beautiful Italian nurse as she nursed the tubercular patients till they died. And then she contracted tuberculosis. And her last dying sigh actually was given in selfie, unselfishness to soldiers that were dying by the thousands. And they said that ought to be it. Think of a beautiful girl that would plant her life in a hospital and then die for dying soldiers. That ought to be it. And they grabbed the dying side, knocked on the gate, and Gabriel came and said, No, sir, that's not it. You'll have to go and come again. You must find the thing that's the most precious from earth to heaven. When you find it, I'll let you in. They came back a little weary from their search, but the story said that they saw a little girl picking flowers out at the edge of a beautiful little village, getting a little bouquet for her mother for a surprise. And she gathered the flowers one by one and arranged them and put them in her little hand. And all of a sudden, a bank robber Riding his old lathering steed, came rushing down a trail, that old horse going at full gait. And he thought he'd made his way out and gotten away, and he stopped his horse down at a little running branch. He got out and hung his old greasy hat, had his saddlebags full of stolen money. And he, his horse was drinking water and he was making ready to run again. And he saw that little girl picking flowers. 
up there on the side of the hill. She was unconscious that was anybody within a mile of her. And all of a sudden, the old church bell back in those days called the people to prayer. And the little girl, just as she'd been taught, knelt on her little old dimpled knees and held her flowers in one hand and bowed her little head and began to thank the Lord, not knowing that danger was so close to her. Felt perfectly at ease and safe as she bowed her head. That old bank robber looked up and saw her, and his mind raced back across the years before he started gambling and drinking and stealing. Remembered his old godly mother at whose knees he bowed many a day when he was a little child. He dropped the reins of his horse and quietly walked to the side of the little girl and knelt down with his head bared and tears jumped across his old scars of sin. And the angel said, that must be it. They got him a handful of tears, knocked on the gate, and Gabriel opened the gate and said, that's it. That's it. Oh, the tears of repentance, the concern of a broken heart for God. That's what gets people in the heaven. Have you ever repented? Have you ever apologized to God? Have you ever really said, Lord, I'm so sorry. Oh, have mercy upon me. And then let Jesus forgive you and cleanse you. Born among strangers in poverty so living in meekness on Galilee's shore, dying in shame as those old wicked once swore. Jesus. Wonderful the Lord, wonderful, wonderful Jesus, He is my friend, truth to the end. He Jesus.